Hi guys, welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. My name is Mike and uh, this is almost time for haying. This is all of our haying equipment that we have here behind us. And today uh, we're gonna kinda take a little bit of a, a, a sidetrack because every piece of equipment here practically needs something done. And so today, rather than chasing cows or pigs or goats or whatever else, emus, whatever else we have going on, today we're gonna be playing mechanic. And I tell you what, mechanicing is not really my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. I'm more of a cow guy. I like getting out and working cows and doing that kind of stuff. But when it comes to working on machinery and turning, up, turning wrenches and doing all that, um, I'd rather leave that to the professionals. But some of this stuff we have to do ourselves because, well, number one, we can't afford the hourly rate that John Deere would charge to do something as simple as change oil. So we're gonna get started over here today uh, as we take a look at some tractors. We've got oil to change, we've got filters to change, uh, we've got, uh, what else do we have to do? Air, fil air filters, oil filters, um, transmission oil filters, tra uh, hydraulic filters, all kinds of stuff like that to go on. Then once we get done with the tractors, we're actually gonna move over to the haying equipment, which needs a whole lot of work. In fact, uh, it's actually time to start tearing some stuff apart and start looking at what needs replaced on some of this equipment. Uh, we've got the, uh, the sickle blades on the mower that are gonna need some work. I think really all we have to do with the rake is get it uh, greased and lubed up. And then on the baler, I know we have a hydraulic hose we have to take off. And we also have some wiring that uh, in the last three years kind of got hammered a little bit. And while most of the hay equipment behind us, uh, over there, hasn't been used for about three years, of course the tractors have been running. So we wanna make sure that we have oil changes done uh, periodically and following the manufacturer's guidelines and all that good stuff uh, to make sure that they run at peak performance. We don't want something to break down during haying, guarantee that something probably will, but if we can limit that, we wanna make sure that we do that. One truck here that has gotten a lot of work over the last couple of years is our Mac. Now this thing has a brand new roll in haying and that is gonna be that it's gonna help us move the hay from the field uh, back up to our hay yard. And it'll be the very first time that we've actually had a vehicle to do this. The Mac's been on the ranch for a couple years. Last year, its big job was moving water. <laughs> but this year it looks like it gets some time off and it's only going to be used during haying since we have lots of water in our reservoirs and hopefully uh, that will keep up throughout the entire summer so basically all we have to do is get this thing up and running make sure that everything's working on it uh, that we're going to need uh, to haul our hay back and forth the 4055 well that comes up next So it seems like every few months we have to jump in the Mack truck. This is an MH600 uh, flat-nosed Mack semi-truck. And we're gonna use it to haul about a 40 foot long flatbed that we're gonna use to haul the hay back and forth from wherever we cut it and bale it to our hay yard. But we're gonna get this thing, just make sure it's running, batteries charged up, all that kind of good stuff. We do uh, keep it charged during the winter, but this is really the first time it's been started for a couple months. Wow, that thing just took off. <laughs> I guess keeping that uh, battery on a trickle charger made all the difference. So this thing, we're gonna let it run for a little bit and uh, warm up. Having this thing to haul hay is gonna beat the tar out of the old way that we used to do it when we can only haul just a few bales at a time. With our 30 foot flatbed, we should be able to haul, I'm guessing maybe even 15 bales. Not exactly sure yet. We're gonna figure that out as we go. Like I said, right beside us here, this is our 4055. This is the farm tractor and we use it uh, mostly for baling uh, during haying. So 
the nice thing is that we got everything done on this one that we have to already. I do have uh, two new thermostats for it uh, that I'm not sure if it's going to need. We may end up changing those out. It was overheating last time we ran it, but uh, we're hoping that we don't have to put those in. I did uh, replace the thermostat sensor, so we're hoping that was the problem and it wasn't actually overheating, it just thought it was. We also replaced the uh, power steering pump in it uh, this spring and uh, coming up I'll share with you how much that cost because obviously there is a cost associated with haying and this year we're keeping really close tabs on it. In fact, what we're doing now with all of our filters and everything, I can tell you, cost right about a thousand dollars for all of our filters. Speaking of which, we're over here at the 6410 now along with our friend Jeff. In my defense, I was left unsupervised. Ain't that the truth? Everybody's unsupervised around here. Uh, this one we've kind of been tinkering with over the last couple weeks. What did we do? We changed the oil. That's and the filter, the oil filter, and the oil filter and, and the, fuel, and the filter. fuel filter. So we've got those changed. Uh, we still have a hydraulic filter to change, and of course our um, air filters yeah. to switch out too. So why don't we start out with the air filters, and we'll get okay. this one wrapped up. Um, we'll get our oil filters changed and figure out where they're at because I don't really remember. Each one of these tractors is different, so <laughs> um, we'll get them changed out. And let's start out with our with our air filters. They should be up front, right? They are. They are. I'd You're have gonna to have YouTube to... it to find out. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to lift up the bucket. Okay. So, well, actually, do we have to on this one? Maybe we don't. No, this one I think. No, it's, I think it's the I think it's the 6420. We have to lift up the bucket to get into this one. We should be able to get it without. Try that. Yeah, yeah it's open. There we go. All right. And up she goes. All right. There we go. Slide that back and off she comes. All right. He had this one off. We did, but we didn't have the filter for it when we had it off. So we took it we off, we blew it out, and then uh, we decided to get a new filter just to make sure. Ah, there it is. And that's what's known as an unboxing. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> One of the things that I find interesting when you come in to do all this stuff is that, you know, we don't do it every day or every week or sometimes even every month or even every year uh, so it's kind of a, a learning experience every time you got to come in here look at I conjured a screwdriver <laughs> that one's back in I'm gonna sneak out of here let Jeff climb back in and replace his canister filter there So air filter is obviously super important, um, mostly because of fuel economy. And uh, we're looking probably right around five gallons an hour or so, something like that. And most of these tractors, the 4055 might be a little bit more. So we're trying to save as much fuel as we can. That's why we went with brand new filters this year, especially when we could be looking at $7 a gallon for diesel. So um, let's get to our hydraulic filters, which are somewhere around here. It's nice and cozy underneath the tractor here. Oh, twist right off though. Uh, Safe assumption it's gonna leak something. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Let me get a hold of one here. Get a new one ready. Okay. Well, this might be a race. Dropped it. There we go. Okay. That's a hydraulic filter. My hands are all hydraulic-y. All right, let me sneak out of here. Okay. And we're out. That's 
why God invented jeans. <laughs> okay. Changing out that hydraulic filter is the last big thing we have to do on this tractor. The 6410, Jeff's favorite tractor. Why is it your favorite tractor again? I can reach the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> I just love hearing that. I don't know why, that just makes me laugh. All right, uh, this tractor is gonna be used hopefully to pull the rake. So uh, as long as it's pulling the rake, we should be good to go. If it does have to run the baler, it can. If we have to mow with it, we can, but um, it's, you know, running the rake is a good job for this tractor. So our next tractor that we've got up here next is the big one that we're gonna be working with today. Um, we've really done nothing on this tractor yet. So we are gonna get rolling, uh, changing the oil, changing the oil filter, changing the fuel filter, changing two hydraulic filters, and uh, all the air filters. So lots to do on this one. Okay. Let's uh, lift up the bucket on this one and get it out of the way. Okay, so here's all the stuff that we need for this one. Uh, we've got hydraulic filters, fuel filter, oil filter. I think we have an oil filter, yep. And some other stuff. <laughs> I guess first off, Jeff, we should probably just get the oil drain. Probably be the first step, right? Yep. Okay. This one's got an oil plug somewhere. There it is, big old oil plug there. Holy smokes, what does it need? <coughs> oh, right there. Yeah. A lot of these John Deere's are metric, so we're gonna use our metric crescent wrench. There you go. Yeah, yeah. look at that, you grunt at it hard enough, eventually everything works. Now. Don't drop the plug in the bucket. A long drain plug. Have the Jeopardy theme music playing? <laughs> there you go, look at you go. All right. Those should be uh, oil filter uh, 4836, last four. Not that one, it'll be a shorty. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I think I got it. Yep. Okay. Oh, losing a little bit. A little bit of fluid. Okay, well. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, my eyes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, with those changed out, the only thing we have left to do is the air filters, put some oil back in. Yuck. Do you know how many oils this thing takes? I do not. Probably, uh, some. Some. Little bits. Three quarts and three ounces. Yeah. Alrighty, Jeff, time to put in your hand. You stuck? No, I'm just trying not to get stabbed in the back by the stairs. 
Uh, time to put some oil back in. 16 liters is what this one holds. So right. what is that, four gallons? Okay. I don't know. 16 liters to gallons? It's America. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. All I know is the oil goes in on this side. Okay. Let that go down. We'll check our or where we're supposed to be or where we say we are. Hey, look at that. Right at the full line. Nice. And you know what, honestly, mechanics have all my respect. Like, oh. just being able to, to just skin knuckles and, and then take that wound, shove it full of oil, throw in some hydraulic fluid, a little bit of dirt. That's, uh, that's something to me. You guys got all my respect. I don't want your job but you got my respect. I like ranching. I don't so much like farming or mechanicking. Mechanicking is probably the whole part of it. So, all right, let's put this thing back together. Thank you, Jeff. Would you do the honors and do some filters? Oh, you want me to get dirty, I see. <laughs> I like to share the wealth. This is like a, a super modified alcohol burner with this blower on it. The blower, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's nice and dirty. Yeah, that's a little dirty. Oh, there's another filter behind it. That's clean in there. The filters are doing their job. Yeah. Vaseline on it or something. <laughs> We're done with this bad boy. Should be all ready for, I think that's it. Should be all ready for, for hand. And uh, for the next thing we have to do, we actually have to get this out of the way. So we're gonna see if she runs. So we now have tractors ready for haying. Our next big project is gonna be some of this equipment. And uh, first up we have our mower, which we need to get the sickle bars out of. We're gonna remove these sickles, which is super simple. There are basically uh, just one bolt that holds this thing in and then what they call a knife pin. And this thing we grease the crap out of every few hours, but this is basically what holds it together. So, if you get your wrench on that side. Wrong size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because that's not 3 sixteenths, or 3 quarter. You said... Oh, 13 wow. sixteenths. What the heck? Jeff needs to put his glasses on. There we go. Okay, that's one dry pin, obviously. So you can see when this goes through, that bolt goes through here and that's what holds uh, gotcha. this whole thing together. So I'll put you up there. So now, watch your fingers. I'll try tap it. That way. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Looking right here. Okay, go ahead and take that one off. 
rest of them here all look okay on the front. The back one has some problems. We'll get there. All right, Jeff is gonna remove that rock guard so we know we need to get a single. And then that whole back piece, we gotta go through and figure out what all we need. It went underneath the shoe. Yeah, is that a single guard? Yep, Don't they come in pairs? No, nope, singles go in the front. Or the Ugh. first one is always a single. Ugh. I don't know why. Okay. All right. Okay, that's it that we can do for the mower today. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to head over to Belfouche and pick up brand new sickles for this thing. Probably some new guards as well. Maybe a few band aids. All right, Jeff, you want to move over to the, the rake? Well, what do we need for the rake? We need a grease gun, don't we? Yep, we're just going to grease the crap out of the rake. The rake has multiple um, grease points. And this actually opens and closes and changes the, uh, the size of the windrow we make. We're going to have to play with that when we actually get out to the field. So Jeff is going to run around and grease this thing really quick. And then we'll move on to the baler. Oh, really quick. This locking doohickey, uh, what is it called? Lock and lock and lube is dang near the coolest thing I've ever seen that has to do with grease fittings. There you go. Then you just squeeze till it comes out? Nope, so this one, you're gonna put your thumb right there, and we usually just count 10. You'll feel it bump when you squeeze, when you pull the trigger. Feel it bump? Yeah. So you count 10 for each one. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, that good. good. We're gonna move on to the last little thing we're gonna take a look at today, and that is our baler. We have to get our hydraulic line off, and we've got a couple broken wires in our wiring harness that uh, we need to mend. Okay, so here's the wiring problem that we have. We have, looks like four, or no, two wires that something or somebody ate through. Actually, it looks like they might have got hot. That's kind of weird. Or cramped. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, and today we're going to be using some solder seal butt connectors. Okay. All right, so our wires are fixed. Now, one thing I've been dreading, <laughs> and that is our hydraulic hose leak that, uh, you know, maybe this won't be too bad. We'll see. So our hydraulic hose leaks begins down here, and it's, is it the top one or the bottom one? I think it's the bottom one, right? I don't recall. Maybe we should replace both. So both of them are damaged. You can see right here, maybe, see the damage on them, so they've been rubbing on something. So we're gonna go ahead and replace both of these, and uh, yeah, hopefully this isn't too big of a pain in the butt. Yep. Nope. Yep, nope. Okay, so we're having trouble finding how to get the thing routed from the beginning from the front so we're actually going to come back here to the back we know it runs this hydraulic cylinder 
which uh, raises and lowers our pickups. So we're gonna actually remove it from here and work our way towards the front, starting going back to front. Okay, so I got them loosened here. So we're gonna have to come back through and zip tie all this stuff again. Drop down through here. I'm gonna grab you in the front. Grab the camera. Did I get it? Okay. Got another one here. It'll be a whole lot of fun putting it back in there. Now, what is happening here? Oh, there's another zip tie here. Can I borrow your uh, cutters? This is a very, very hidden zip tie. Got it. One of them's on. There we go. Woo! Oh my gosh. I guarantee you doing that. Just save like a thousand dollars. Yeah, in labor cost. In labor alone. cost, yeah. Wow. They probably would take the tongue off. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right, guys. <clears throat> that gets us. Here's your cutters back. That gets us to the point where we need to get parts. Uh, we need to get our sickles for the other side. We need to get new hydraulic lines for this side. We still have new belts to put on here. Tire, a couple tires to fix on the rake, grease everything like crazy, and uh, but yeah, and then we'll be ready to hay. So I'm a mess. How do you feel? I'm ready for the end of the day. <laughs> well, um, we're gonna come back here and clean up really quick, but I want to cut you guys loose for the day. So I promised you guys that we'd talk a little bit about the cost of haying, and and what's uh, what's been. Um, compiled to this point, let's say that. So we replaced the power steering pump in the 4055, which is right over there. Uh, that cost us three grand. We put in 300 gallons of fuel so far, and we haven't even started cutting yet. That was about 1,800. And we have another $1,000 into filters, um, oil, hydraulic filters, air filters, all that kind of good stuff between all three tractors. So now we're up to six grand almost. We're gonna have our sickles, which are gonna be another couple hundred, maybe $300. A new belt, new hydraulic lines. So let's say, just uh, for the sake of argument, $6,500 into haying already. And we haven't cut one little piece of hay. Guys. I am extremely excited to be cutting hay this year. At the same time, yeah, it's a big chunk of cash that's leaving the ranch really fast. So I've got hydraulic fluid all over me. I've got oil all over me. It's time to go take a shower. But one good thing is that we've got tractors that are ready to go. Tractors that are ready to hay. We don't have haying equipment that's ready to hay, but I guarantee you that we will by Monday because that's the day that we start cutting grass. And we really hope that you can come along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Head on over to our website, order some beef jerky, become a Patreon, and you can order beef and pork directly from the ranch. And you can help us out and you can help us hay. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming life. <laughs> oh man, we've got a mess. A productive mess though. We got a lot done today. Very productive. Does it feel good to get something done? It does. It does. We're not done. Or endorphins get going and all that stuff. Warm fuzzies. <laughs> Corporate I, speak. I love the smell of grease in the morning. <laughs>